I mean, YouTube is just ruining so many things. <laughs> like so many people are quitting their jobs to do YouTube. It's absolutely crazy. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I'm a board certified diagnostic and interventional radiologist. Now I'm back from a little holiday extended hiatus, but you know, I wasn't gonna stop forever. You know, eventually I had to come back and I had to find a reason to come back and it was the video that we're going to react to today. And obviously, you know I love these med student quitting videos, not because I like med students quitting, but I like to go over them and talk about it because I think it's important because a lot of med students feel this certain way when they're going through med school. So let's get into the video. 2019, I started a journey to become infectious disease specialist in the US. Oh, I forgot to mention who this was. I mean, I'm a little rusty in the whole YouTube thing I see. So this is Santiago AQ. I assume he is a med student. I don't know anything about him. He doesn't have his Instagram posted, but uh, based off this video, he is a med student. And since 2019, he has been trying to become an infectious disease doctor in the United States. And here we go. I don't know if you've heard it before, but there is something called the fur burners theory. This theory basically states that our lives can be think of as a stove with fur burners on it. And according to that theory, every time you turn up the heat in one burner, the heat in the other burners goes down. I've never heard of that, but I like it. And that's kind of my problem with medicine, that I feel that to practice it, especially to practice it the way I wanted to practice it, you almost have to accept a life where all of the other burners, except for the one of work, are pretty much turned off. I somewhat agree with this. And the reason I somewhat agree with this is because it depends on the specialty you are in. Now, obviously this whole channel is dedicated to me talking about how you can have a life outside of medicine. It is much easier in certain fields like pathology, radiology, anesthesia. It is not so good in fields that are surgery related. I was just so focused on my studies and on playing the game that I, that I almost never stopped to reflect if that game made any sense at all. This is why, again, why I made this channel, because it's easy to forget in the grand scheme of things what you're actually doing and what you're striving for. As a med student, all you're trying to do is just work and soak up as much information as possible and do well in your exams. But you also have to pick a specialty for the rest of your life. And it's a pretty important decision. I started to realize that yes, medicine was in fact awesome, but it also stealed the most valuable thing I had, my time. It does steal a lot of your time, but <laughs> I'm just gonna keep saying that this whole video. There are ways where you can get your time back, especially when you finish residency. Now, med school and residency, you're not getting that time back, but afterwards it can be worth it. Despite my passion for medicine, I was not going to live a life where I kept sacrificing the things that I value the most just to be successful and earn a living. So again, I kind of agree with this, and this is kind of what I talk about a lot on my channel. Work-life balance is everything, right? He was probably frustrated, but even if he wasn't in med school, he may have had the same thing happen to him. Maybe he was in his career, or maybe he had, I don't know, something else going on that he was focused on. It's just whatever you're focusing on your life in that instant, even if you were trying to become a successful entrepreneur, you focus on that business and you basically channel out everything else, but laser focus on that business you're trying to develop. And that's just the entrepreneurial life. It's the same as being in medicine. A lot of fields are very similar to medicine. So I don't really get what he's going to do other than work <laughs> because you have to sacrifice at least something to work. Naturally, I started to look for solutions and I realized that I had about three main options to choose from. Number one, I could enter a less demanding specialty. So does he, does he watch my channel? He must watch my channel. Something that allows me to have a better work-life balance, something like dermatology or ophthalmology or radiology. But the truth is that none of those specialties were ever of any interest to me. I mean, maybe they weren't of interest to him, but could you at least like them like 95%? I mean, you're never gonna like a specialty 100%. There's gonna be some things about that specialty that you won't like 100%. Maybe he could get away with like 85%. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm sure he probably wouldn't mind working from home like part-time as a radiologist. I mean, how bad can you dislike it, right? I could dedicate myself to private practice because as you may know, private practice is a little bit more relaxed, more flexible, demands less hours and pays better. It actually depends. Some private practices do allow for more time outside of work, but also academic places sometimes offer better hours and better lifestyle. The thing I really loved about medicine, the thing that made it really a career and not just another job, was the academic part, was doing rounds, was being able to teach. Oh, 
He actually liked rounding? Who actually enjoys rounding? I could go somewhere that pays really, really well and just work part-time. Okay, so we have worked in the academic center where you're not rushed. You get paid pretty darn well as a physician. You get to train people, take your time, see patients, round, all that kind of stuff, which is how he wants to practice, which is an option. He could also do part-time that pays really well. I, I don't understand. Well, I, I'm sure he'll explain himself. By the time I had done everything else, by the time I was done with all of the other exams and I started to apply to rotations, rotations started to close. Because of course, a global pandemic had to occur. Mm, that's terrible timing. Like absolutely terrible timing. Now I feel bad. Life had put an obstacle in my way and was making me stop when all I wanted to do was to keep moving forward. So under those circumstances, I decided to do the only thing that made sense for me at the time. Which was keep going because there's going to be so many roadblocks in your life that you have to overcome to get to the final point where you want to be to reach that goal. So I'm hoping he's going to say that right now. Which was to take some time off. Oh, all right, I'll, I'll accept that. I'll accept that. Spend time with my family, maybe resume some of, some of my old hobbies. You know, experience a little bit of that life that I've always wanted to have. I mean, that's kind of what I did this past time or the past holiday weeks or month that I took time off from YouTube and just kind of hung out with my family, played a little golf, but you know, I started to miss YouTube a little bit and it's too cold to play golf outside. So back to YouTube we are. I've always had this notion that the only people who are able to make it online, who are able to make a living online are the famous and the charismatic. And here I was, nor famous, nor charismatic, <laughs> and I'm still somehow earning a living. So very, very weird. It is crazy. And that's why YouTube and this kind of platform, if you enjoy it, you can also enjoy it and monetize it. And it can be a separate source of income for you. Even if you as a med student or resident or whatnot, as you see a ton of different med students doing, you just have to have valuable information and have people watch you. <laughs> it's that simple. So what did I do with all this new information about a different lifestyle? Not much. I mean, I still felt like this was just too good to be true, like kind of unrealistic to have as a permanent lifestyle, that it was going to be transitory and that the wisest thing was just to keep taking advantage of these few months to rest, recharge batteries, earning a few bucks on the side, and then keep working and focusing on my plan to enter residency in the US. I often wonder that if I started my YouTube career in med school before I started making money as a resident or even an attending, would I continue on down the path? I mean, of course I would because I spent four years in med school. That's kind of a waste if I don't finish it out, you know? I mean, at least to me. But also YouTube is great. Social media is great but there are wide swings in your income levels per month. And I personally like something a little more sustained that like, I know I'm going to get paid X amount here. So you don't have to worry about your income levels month over month. But I mean, maybe that's just me. And that's probably why I do YouTube part-time instead of full-time. But often, even now, I wonder, could I do YouTube full-time and make more than I do as a board-certified interventional radiologist? I mean, probably actually, but I don't know. I can't give that up. I would just do both. Just find more time in my life. I've always felt very like at home, like a fish in the water while being in the hospital. And yet here I was doing an, staying in an amazing hospital in my favorite specialty with very, very kind people and still for some reason feeling completely out of place. I wonder if this whole COVID thing didn't affect him getting his rotation at the beginning of this whole situation, if he would have felt the exact same. Like if he didn't start his YouTube and have this monetization platform where he could draw an income from passively, would it affect his mind? You know what I mean? If he didn't have that and he only had medicine, he would probably be more gung ho for medicine. But it's easy to kind of fall back when you have something better and shinier to the side. Does that make sense? If he's not feeling 100% into medicine anymore, it would be really hard to continue and do something you dislike. That's what I did in the corporate world before I switched over to medicine. I hated my job and I was like, there's no way I can spend another hour in this job, much less a whole career of just being miserable. If you're miserable, you have to change. And if he wasn't happy, you gotta do something about it. Medicine is kind of like this very well established and restrictive path. I mean, yes, it has alternatives and choices and you can go into dermatology or radiology or surgery and you can do private practice or stay in the academic field or do research so you have options but in the end all the pathways have are, are kind of established for you are kind of very restricted in the sense that you know that if you turn right you're gonna end up there and you know exactly how there looks like it is true medicine is a very safe field if you will 
Like you're always going to find a job as a physician and you're not really going to worry about not getting the next paycheck per se. I mean, they don't really fire physicians that often unless you do something crazy. But even now with all the layoffs going on in like the tech industry and in other big banks, you know, at least we have pretty good job security in medicine. I'm also terrible at making those huge life choices where you just go all in. Like, I, I don't feel like I could ever just quit my job and do YouTube full time just on a whim. I don't have that all in mentality. You don't really know what's going to happen in the YouTube creator space. YouTube could literally just tomorrow say, hey, we're not paying anybody anymore. I mean, they probably wouldn't do that because they would, well, I don't know, maybe they would. I don't like my career being at the mercy of like a huge conglomerate company. I at least have skills as a physician that I know even if I get fired from my current job or lose my job or the hospital shuts down, I can use those skills somehow to help me find another job. So you kind of have to choose what is more important to you. What are you more willing to put in the line to risk in order to get the other value? And I realized that for me, it's more important freedom and autonomy than security. That's a strong move right there. I mean, security, it's secure. <laughs> Being secure feels good, but the freedom and the autonomy also feels good. It's kind of funny because I know exactly what he's talking about because I'm in both of these spaces currently. And I've definitely thought of these things, but I could never do it because for an, an number of different reasons. Pessimistic thinking can be applied both ways. Policies can change any minute. But you know what? I can also lose my license. I can also get fired. I can also make a terrible mistake and get a lawsuit. I mean, a bunch of bad stuff can happen either way. I, I see what he's saying here, but the skills you have as a physician can translate into a lot of different roles in the healthcare space. Just because you lose your license, you could still, I don't know, teach radiology courses, or I mean, you're, you're not gonna lose your license unless you're like doing something severely negligent, or you're one of the people that we talked about on this channel. Even in the worst case scenario, where literally the internet breaks down, I can still find a solution in that case. For instance, I can resume my medical practice. I mean, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. If all else fails, he can still just pursue medicine. And honestly, this day and age, nobody will really care about that gap because he took a chance and he started doing medically related content. And that's kind of on the same page, but yeah. I don't know if I emphasized it enough, but the reason I now have the job that I have is because I entered a career that I loved so much that it led me to create a YouTube channel about it. That's exactly how I feel too. If I didn't go into medicine, I would have never even created this channel to begin with to share everything that I talked about on this channel. So it kind of like opened up this entire door, you know? No matter what I do, I already spent eight years of my life studying medicine. And nothing I will do, nothing I can do will bring those eight years back. Those eight years are gone. The real question here is, do they have student debt in Colombia? That's what I wanna know. I hope he gets into that. I can choose to have wasted eight years of my life and live a life that doesn't make me happy, or I can choose to have wasted eight years of my life and live a life that does make me happy. The past will remain the same because guess what? The past always remains the same. Thank you. I This drives me crazy. So many people like dwell on the past, but you can't change the past. So just focus on today and tomorrow. That's all you can do. So many people think about the past over and over and over. It, it's already gone. It happened. Stop thinking on the past. Move on. You know, while I'm watching this, it's actually funny that I mean, YouTube is just ruining so many things. Like so many people are quitting their jobs to do YouTube. It's absolutely crazy. All right, so that's it. I kind of discussed this in the video. I think everybody kind of goes through a similar situation when they start YouTube. They think about why would I continue my current career path when I have such flexibility with YouTube or being a creator? And I totally agree with that. And I often have questioned that, like I said many times, should I just quit medicine altogether and go full-time YouTube and just crush it? But I like medicine more. YouTube is a thing I like, but medicine is, a passion of mine. I worked so hard and I liked it so much that I'll never quit. I may pull back the reins a little bit, go part-time eventually, but I can't give it up altogether. So on that note, hopefully you liked this video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about it. And uh, I think I'm going to start posting a little more frequently now, maybe like once a week, maybe twice a week. We'll see. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling pretty good about it. All right. I'll see you on the next one soon. Bye.